Hello, everyone, and welcome to the August 2014 Game Night, Pound Game Night for Indie Plus. Uh, this is our demo game. This is where members of the Indie Plus staff get on and play a tabletop RPG together. And tonight, we are playing A Very British Murder, which is an exhibition game of the 66 RPG. We have a special treat for you. For A, Br a Very British Murder, we have an actual British person who we have brought on to make it more authentic. And that would be uh, none other than Chris Drakenza. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. Thank you, Rich. Really great. Awesome. Uh, first of all, just so you know, this event upholds the Indie Plus community standards. To find out more about the standards, Google for Indie Plus community standards. Please be aware that this event may include discussions about our descriptions of explicit and or abusive language. Not likely, but we're just going to warn you ahead of time because, you know, Brendan's on, on here, so it's a possibility. Just saying. Well, uh, so we have on as players, uh, as I mentioned before, Brendan Conway. How are you doing, Brendan? I'm okay. I'm a little sick, so I'm going to sound a little gross. But, you know, that's fine. I don't have to live through it. <laughs> you do have to live through it, the sickness. I would hate if it were otherwise. Uh, I already mentioned Chris, so now we'll move on to uh, the wonderful and talented Jen Martin. What's with the wonderful and talented stuff? You, no, you got to find a different introduction. I can't call you a unicorn, no. so I don't know... No. I... Awesome person. Okay. Alright, great, thanks. And Mark Yestrum. How you doing, Mark? I'm good. See, Mark. Mark's okay. I'll just... He's just okay. I don't get any special adjectives, Jen. Thanks for throwing yours away into the trash so I can root through that trying to find something. <laughs> All right, Chris Trigiza is our game leader, which is a term from the 66 RPG, uh, which he uh, can tell us quite a bit about. And why is that, Chris? Uh, because I wrote it. Well, take it away, Chris. Uh, thank you. Um, right, yes, we're going to be playing the 66 RPG. We're actually going to be playing the 66 RPG light version of the game, which is basically the game, but without all the combat mechanics in, because we don't need them. There won't really be any combat in this adventure. We're actually playing the Mince Pies and Murder adventure. Uh, that is available now from the website. Um, so, uh, which is a 1920s murder investigation, very much in the style of Agatha Christie, um, Philip Marlowe, you know, um, those sorts of things. Your classic British. Uh, detective fiction. So, um, right, I believe everybody has got their character sheets sorted out. Has everyone got character sheets? Yeah. Um, you should also have um, six tokens. Um, these is what we call potential. Um, you need six tokens, you need four of one type, two of the other type, and this basically just keeps a control of how much you can use in any given action. So, we have two types of Potential. One is the four dynamic and two static. And the way this plays into the game is that dynamic things you can activate advantages, skills, etc., which are conscious thought. Um, static stuff does sort of background knowledge, unconscious thought. And you use up to six, up to all your tokens in any given action. So if you want to do something, you look at your character sheet. Maybe you pick up a couple of skills from there. You spend your potential on those, you roll the dice, it says on the character sheet, and then we decide whether you succeeded or not. It's all very simple, and I'm sure you'll grasp it as soon as we start playing. Okay, any last questions before I give you the introduction? No. Okay. Right, okay, so this is the introduction and setting the scene to the adventure. Okay. As you step off the train into the blizzard, you begin to wonder if accepting Jimmy Hard Cheese's invitation to Cromford Manor was a big mistake. Spending Christmas with a dying man you've never met is a gamble, but the invitation was one a great detective could not refuse. Jimmy Hard Cheese, the greatest gangster of his day, invited you to spend his last Christmas with him so he could spill the beans on a world-shattering case. Why had Jimmy taken the rap for that murder 20 years ago? Who were those powerful politicians who were in the brothel at the time? 
Was there really a member of the royal family involved? And why did he only serve five years, and where did all his money come from? As he described it in the imitation, a murderer has gone free because the police were prevented from investigating the case. Only a world-renowned independent detective could ever hope to get close to the real killer. A shout of Cromford Manor! Anyone for Cromford Manor? rings out through the fast-falling snow. A man stands behind the open door of a large automobile, and as you get off the train, look up and down the platform, you see some faces you recognise. So the four of you are standing on this platform, it's Christmas Eve, it's snowing, you've just got off this train, and you've just realised that you and three other famous detectives are all in the same place at the same time. So, I want to start with Mark. Would you like to sort of uh, just give a quick description of your character and give us your name? Sure. Uh, so, I am the aristocrat. Um, I'm the second son of a lord educated at Eton and Oxford, and I'm a member of the British establishment. I'm in my 40s. I have uh, sort of short, wavy hair. It's got gray around the temples. Um, and uh, so my face is is uh, is very clean cuts, uh, but but also the the creases are starting to show as I'm sort of on the cusp of of really aging, um, and my eyes are are really really bright gray, so they kind of like are sort of flit around, looking taking in as much as possible, um, and I'm known for sort of being, you know, a little disinterested in in things that are not exciting or. Or, or mysterious enough, I, I'm the kind of detective who will turn down a case because it's simply too easy. Okay, uh, that's great. Okay, Jen, would you like to introduce yourself? I am playing the old one. Her name is Miss June Maple. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, she's in her 60s. She's a very handsome woman, although she has very bright sort of eyes, and you can kind of tell that if she really wanted to, she could get around quickly if she wanted to. Um, she, let's see, pretty short, probably like five foot even on a good day, um, wears all sorts of shawls, like several of them. Um, she doesn't say much. She mostly just listens and watches. Okay, thank you, Jen. Okay, Rich. Uh, so the character I'm going to be playing's name is Vinnie Mallet. Uh, he's, he's not, this is his first time across the pond, as it were. Uh, he's a, kind of a hard-nosed detective uh, from the East Coast. And he, you know, he grew up in a cop family, and he kind of moved on to being a detective after serving in the force for a long time. Excellent. Thank you, Rich. And finally, Brendan. Hi, I'm, I'm Bryce Derrick. Uh... I've been around the world. I've seen so many things. Uh, it's it's really just a great world we live in. I I just I cannot tell you how much I enjoy just solving mysteries along with my my little white dog, <laughs> my little white dog who I call Spot, <laughs> who has no spots. Um, yeah, Bryce Bryce Derrick is is a kid and he's not an old, old enough to drink, but he's like really pretty on the ball. Um, when it, like when it comes down to it, he can do pretty well at like hearing lies and 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 just digging and digging and digging and digging until he gets at the story. But he definitely has that whole you know he's a naive kid who's enjoying himself too much and that has a tendency to get him into trouble thing going. Excellent, I love it. Okay, so the four of you are on the platform. You look up and down. What are you doing? Oh, so I. Oh my! And that's oh my! I'm just standing there in in oh oh. So, so I reach into my coat. And I have this big coat with the collar turned up, and I reach into my coat and I pull out a very small, thin silver case, and I pop it open and remove a cigarette very gently, and and uh, with the other hand produce a lighter and and light light like very like broodingly light the cigarette in the wind and the snow, right? It sort of mysteriously set, stays lit. Um, and I, I look I look over to uh, towards the detective and say I assume, or to, I assume you're close enough to me, uh, uh, Vinny, um, yeah. and I say um, a, a bit lost are we? Well, you know I don't travel as much as a kid, but hey, 
This is interesting. So you're here for uh, hard cheese? Ah, uh, I assume you received the same invitation that I did then, yes. Oh, present company, you know, and all that. I'm pretty sure that uh, probably all headed the same way. Miss Maple, uh, I assume that you will be joining us as well then, yes. Of course. Squeeze. Someone give me a hand, please. And I, I very your arm out expecting someone to come. <laughs> I, I, I very quickly move in and I say, um, oh, don't worry about the rabble. I will, of course, be here to shepherd your travel to our destination. Yes. I'll get your bags. As um, as you sort of go and sort of uh, give Miss Maple a hand, uh, the figure who was shouting uh, Comfort Manor sort of comes forward. He's got an umbrella trying to shield and comes straight over to Miss Maple, starts shielding from the uh, snow. Uh, oh, uh, lady, gentlemen, um, please quickly into the car. Let's get out of this horrible weather. Um, quickly, over here. Would you like to take my arm, uh, Miss Maple? Yes, thank you, son. Do, do watch your step, it is rather slippy. And he leads you all over to a, what um, you would certainly recognise, uh, uh, Mark, is um, a silver ghost Rolls Royce. Uh, absolutely beautiful car, um, swings open the back door, and there's a beautiful leather interior, he ushers you all in. Um, very fine, it's nice and warm in there, and he'll sort of go to the back of the car and sort out all your bags and put them in the boot. What a, you might refer to as the trunk, I believe. Um, and yeah, it, um, you're sort of looking around, I mean, the, the, uh, particularly um, you'll notice that it's very fine, it's high quality, it's all new pretty much. You lift up the arm in the uh, back of the car and there's a mini drinks cabinet and you spot some really good quality uh, whiskey and you know brandy and all the sort of things you would expect for a gentleman. Yeah, I'm grabbing a tumbler and just pouring a little bit of the whiskey there. Uh, yeah, there is a very fine American whiskey. Um, your favorite brand, actually. Great, great. Y'all, y'all want any of uh, any want some drinks? You can look. It's something that is of higher quality than the trash you're currently holding. I would be quite interested in it. Oh, well, it doesn't, uh, doesn't appear that I can find that. What about you, Miss Marple? Miss Maple? No, thank you. No, I'll for you, Kate. Tea. All right, well, too bad. More for me. <laughs> um, the, the driver sort of, um, you have a uh, boot uh, thud shut and the driver sort of comes around, gets in the driver's seat um, and he sort of um, pulls back the sort of little uh, dividing glass between the uh, driver and the uh, back and sort of leans in. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, I forgot my manners. I'm Henry, um, so uh, I'll be driving you over to Comfort Manor. Normally, I'd say we'll be there in 10, 15 minutes on top. However, this snow is appalling. All the roads are terrible. Um, so it may take us a little while to get to the manor. Um, um, so um, please make yourself comfortable. And it, if you have any questions, please ask the way. Ask, ask away. And with that, he sort of um, um, starts to uh, drive very cautiously down some country lanes. It, it's just it's just about dark. It's just about um, become dark and in the snow. So you can see very little outside the windows, but you get the sense you're moving quite slowly. So, um, is there anything you wish to do as you sort of trundle along? Um, I'd like to I'd like to ask the, uh, the, the, the is the driver available to ask questions of while he drives. Yes, yes, there's a little partition that he's left open. Yeah, I say, um, so you uh, work for uh, Mr. Hard Cheese. Yeah, oh, oh yes, Mr. Cheese. Very nice man, Mr. Cheese. And when, when did you come into Mr. Cheese's employ? 
Oh, about six months ago when he moved into the manor. Ah, I see. Well, what did you do before that? Oh, no, I came with the manor. I, I'm the... Um, I, I, to be honest, I'm the groundsman most of the time. We don't have much need for a chauffeur, so I sort of double up. Uh, so I actually was looking after the manor, and have I've look, been the groundsman there for, oh, 30 years now. Um, so uh, when he bought on the uh, manor house, I sort of came with the house. Uh, what are your impressions of uh, Mr. Cheese? Oh, well, he's he's a nice man. You know, he's a he's a, he's a very nice man. Um, bit informal. I mean, I sort of um, gentlemen who owned the manor beforehand and other gentlemen I've worked for oh, tend to be a lot more formal. But Mr. Cheese is nice and relaxed. I, I think it comes from his background. He's more well, sir. He's he's not like you, sir. He didn't go to the proper schools like you, sir. Yes, yes, it's a problem. When people don't have the proper schooling, and I look directly at the heart at a at at a uh, mallet. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I get a read on him to see if he's telling the truth or not? Like, is that is that actually the case? Absolutely. So look at your character sheet, see what advantages okay. you have, and try and work out a combination which is going to make sense. Okay, so I have two static and four dynamic. Is that right? That's right, yep. And so the, the ones with higher CPs, are those better? Yes, if you look, the high CPs mean uh, more points on the dice. So you're, each individual advantage will be a D6 plus 0 to a D6 plus 6 is the maximum. So obviously oh. more is better. All right, so for example, I could use a static one for investigator. So I'm constantly watching and investigating. Yep, right? you're definitely investigating right now, so that makes sense. Uh, and I could have another static one for... Uh, or would it be like uh, well, they're all basically the same uh, cultural trivia to see if he's actually from this region, right? Or whether he he might be from a different region. Yeah, that that, that makes sense to me. Okay, cool. And then uh, for dynamic, I think I'll use uh, patience. So kind of like try to draw out his story uh, and problem solving because I'm trying to kind of like work out where he's really from. Okay. Um, just to give you a sort of sense how this works, there is not a fixed score you have to beat. It comes okay. down to judge my judgment, and it's as much about sort of like the questions you ask and the advantages you use as the dice roll. So sure. if you use, if you ask the right questions and use really appropriate advantages, then you're going to get more information regardless of what dice you roll. Um, so if you specifically sort of like you asking about trying to get a read on where he's from. Um, that's sort of like the key thing you're trying to find out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, does that? So, should I roll? Are those are those dynamic ones okay? Yeah, I mean, the way this works is we. If there's any, most of the time it's common sense. If there's any yeah. doubt, we throw it open to the group. Um, and if everyone's sort of okay with those advantages, it all makes sense to people. Then yeah, you're good to roll. Okay, cool. And I think I'll probably add interrogation in there too, since I'm. I'm trying to extract some information from it. Yes, yes. It says the subtle and not-so-subtle art, so I assume you're being um, fairly subtle so, about it. Subtle about it, yes. So uh, so that is up to, it looks like, 3d6 plus 4. No, you no have, sorry, 5, uh, 5d6 plus 4. That's right, yeah. All right, cool. So I will roll that. I don't think it's going to show up on my screen, so, so could someone else roll for me? Jen, would you mind rolling for me? Because I don't sure. think it's actually going to show up on my screen. You have 66, you said? 5d6 plus 4. 5d6. Six. 16, is that it? Plus 4 is 20. A 20, uh, that's a good roll. Okay, yes. Um, so you sort of question him and, and talk to him and ask a few pertinent questions. And you're pretty confident his story rings true. Certainly his sort of voice and manner are very much of a person from this part of the country, of someone of his social status and his sort of work. So that all rings true very much. Um, you know, you can see he's physically fit, um, so it fits with him being a groundsman, and also his hands and skin is sort of, uh, well, basically tan, someone who works outdoors a lot, so everything um, fits uh, with what he says. 
Great. So his story, just to confirm his story, was that he has worked here for a long time, doesn't really have a connection to this guy. The guy moves into the building, and he sort of is taking care of it. That's right, yes. Perfect, cool. Yeah. So I turn back to the group, and I say, um, I believe our driver is not particularly attached to his employer. Thanks. Uh, the driver sort of leans in and, um, uh, Mr. Mallet, I think if you um, look under your, your seat, you'll find another bottle. Under the seat? That's, uh, that's great. Yeah, it looks like there's a, like a storage under here. That's pretty great. Thanks. Yeah. There's a, another couple of uh, big bottles of your favourite brand. I, I, just, I just thought you might be needing it, sir. That's uh, it's really thoughtful of you. And, um, Oh, jeez. I'll just stick with the one, though, for now. How long you say we're going to be in traffic? Um, uh, it's not so much traffic. It's more sort of snow. Actually, so I, I sort of... Um, looks like it's a bit of a drift up ahead. Uh, let me just get out and clear it a bit. It sort of gets out, and you hear him sort of go to the boot and get a shovel out, and you can just... In the headlights ahead, you can see him sort of clearing a bad snow drift uh, for a few minutes. Miss Maple, what's uh, what's your gather on this? What do you think Cheese is gonna show here? I mean, you went well, to a lot of trouble. I don't know that he's gonna show us anything. I think he's going to uh, wait for us to figure it out. He obviously wants whoever perpetrated the murder apprehended. Hmm. Uh, the um, uh, after a few moments, he gets back in and the car pulls on, and um, he slowly crawls through the countryside. Um, it's going to take about an hour, all told, to get to your destination. So, if there's anything you wish to uh, do or ask, uh, feel free. But or we can skip on a little bit. Uh, I feel like none of us really knows anything other than uh, the driver, and I feel like we've sort of cleared as much information as, as we can from him, unless somebody else has an idea of what to do. I, I was going to make small talk with the driver, because that's my thing. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not necessarily like trying to prize anything out of him. I'm just making small talk. How is life? What do you do? What's your hobbies? What's your favorite kind of tea? Um, so I have small talk. Mm -hmm. um, I have empathy. Yeah. I have psychology. Um, what's another one? Problem solving? Question mark? Well, are you really solving a problem? No, yeah, not yeah. really. No. Um, hmm. No, I think that's probably about it. Okay, that's, that's a good start. So, uh, so uh, 3d6 plus 4. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's good. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you sort of chit-chat over the whole course of the journey. Um, and very much he seems to be an honest, friendly uh, sort of person, um, but also professional in that um, he doesn't actually reveal anything about the, his master, which is what you'd expect from a servant. You, you wouldn't want a servant chatting to the guests about the master in this way and you know he's very respectful in, in that way and yeah you you, you see very nice man a likable man quite sort of person you'd quite have not happy to have managing your garden okay and you sort of while the way um, and eventually um, the car pulls into what is a uh, clearly some sort of uh, the driveway to a manor house. Long line of trees uh, stretching off into the darkness. You can just see some lights of a house at the end of them. Um, but as you sort of get about 10, 20 yards up the driveway, the car just grinds to a halt as it runs into a snowdrift. Um, and he says, oh, um, 
I'm sorry, lady, gentlemen. Uh, we're going to have to sort of um, uh, walk, I think, to the uh, house. I don't think we're going to make it up the driveway. Just leave all your bags and stuff. We'll, we'll sort that out, and we'll have to uh, make a run for it. And he sort of gets out and gets the umbrella out, uh, particularly for Miss Maple, um, and helps you all out of the car. Um, and as you're doing this, you see the doors to the house open, and you see a couple of other... Uh, servants come running out, um, also carrying umbrellas, um, and sort of running down to the drive to meet you. Um, and they will sort of like quickly sort of scuttle you up to the house, um, see you into the hallway. Um, it, this is a uh, Cromford Manor is a it's not a big manor house. It's not a big, huge, stately home you might have seen in uh, big dramas. This has got a small building, uh, but clearly enough for good few rooms, good servant quarters. Um, but not, it's not a massive, stately home. It's, it's a very modest um, uh, home. Um, and you're guided into uh, the hallway uh, by someone. There's clearly a butler and a maid here who is sort of um, guard guide you in, and um, you enter this beautiful hallway, there's a staircase stretching up, um, there's a big Christmas tree occupying one end of the hallway, and all beautifully decorated, um, there's a closed door off to a study, and an open door into a drawing room where there's a big roaring fire, and the butler and the maid quickly, you know, hurry you into um, the drawing room, taking your coats, making sure um, you know, making sure you, you get seats in front of a fire for uh, Miss Maple, and you sort of um, sort of quickly sort of get settled down, and sort of um, uh, the butler sort of um, uh, politely inquires, um, sort of, uh, Miss Maple, uh, what can I get you to drink? Oh, some tea would be lovely. Some tea, certainly, and and um, um, and um, young Mister Master Derek, uh, what can I get you? Oh, a glass of milk. Glass of milk, and for your little dog. No, oh, he'll take some milk too. Oh, milk all round. Very good, young sir. Uh, Mr. Mallet. I'm good, thanks. Okay. Are you sure you don't want a glass for that, sir? Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Uh, and, and and you, sir, Mr. Aristocrat. I would like some tea as well. Tea, excellent. Um, the the maid who you spot is a really nice um, mid twenties yeah, young sort of woman, uh, beautiful uh, red hair, um, sort of sort of scuttles off out through a door, um, obviously going to the kitchen um, to get to the appropriate. And a few moments will come back. Um, um, the butler, sorry, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, I, I am Newgate, by the way, I, I am Mr. Cheese's butler. Um, Mr. Cheese is in, resting in his bed at the moment. Um, the, um, he is, um, as you know, quite ill, um, so he has to conserve his energy. He will be down for dinner later. Um, why don't you enjoy your drinks uh, while we get your rooms ready for you, get your bags upstairs. So uh, please enjoy your uh, drinks. And he sort of steps outside and you're sort of left alone uh, for a few moments. Uh, I'd like to look around the room. I just want to kind of idly just sort of pick things up and look at them and put them down. Sort of gently caressing the clues, whatever might be around here, out of the room. Getting your dirty fingerprints on everything. <laughs> it is not a concern for me. Uh, it's a beautifully uh, furnished room. Uh, soft leather armchairs, dark wood panelling, large fireplace. Um, there are several paintings of cityscapes decorating the walls, and a large drinks cabinet occupies one corner. Great. Is there is there anything more here that would require deeper attention, or is it just sort of a, a well kept study? Um, it, it, it's it's a well kept uh, drawing room. What does sort of stick out a little bit are the paintings. 
um, because they're not, you know, you're just it's a manor house that you expect nice pastoral scenes or possibly family portraits or something like these. Uh, but that these paintings are um, clearly um, of America um, and yeah, probably most New York, you'd say, um, um, to the, the working class bars and streets of New York. I mean, they, they're just a little bit out of character with the rest of the room and the rest of the house you've seen. Mr. Mallet, this is perhaps more your territory than mine. Oh, yeah, well, you know, some grad is what a lot of time. Eh? Some of these look like they're about five years old, like that diner right there is closed down, but uh, good eye for detail. I, I didn't think cheese was American. It's kind of funny. Um, you know that uh, Cheese went to America when he was released from prison. That's where he'd been living for about the last ten years. Uh, though you don't remember him living in New York. You thought it was somewhere down south. You're not entirely sure where. Um, but you're absolutely right about the paintings. They're all relatively recent. It's only yeah, five, ten years. And you do recognize some of the places, actually. Um, particularly sort of some of these scenes are like uh, Waterfront. Um, New York, um, where particularly um, Irish American area, um, and you've had some run-ins with a gang there. You know, you look actually, you look at one and you say that that bar. That's why I punched someone. You know, to get some information. I, you know, I, was, I had a big run-in with the White Hand Gang in that bar. Yeah, of course, I'm telling that story. So, you know, you guys, you've probably read. The whole thing, like the long bar, and somebody beats somebody up in there, runs them down the bar. I actually pulled that off there. In the white hand, we had some problems, and, you know, I had to convince one of them to talk. So, uh, hey, by the way, kid, you probably shouldn't be listening to this. But, I am uh, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it looks just like it. So, you know, I'm kind of curious, you know, if these, these diamonds, anything doesn't look quite right, other than the fact it's a little out of time. I mean... Probably look at this pretty closely. Is right up my alley. I want to. I would like to look at them very closely, right? And I want. I want to see if there's any sort of like I, I'll pull like I pull a little like me, it looks like a little metal rod with a little little point at the end, and I and I just want to like kind of poke at them gently to see if there's anything are they you know like are they hollow like is the are they real right? And I just kind of want to poke around and, and kind of you know see see what they're about. Okay, yeah, that sounds like an action, so put me together some advantages. Great. I would like to use uh, Educated uh -huh. right? and Investigator, I think, for my... Well, no, actually, let me think. For Static, I think I'll use... Um, uh, yeah, Educated and Intelligence, sound, or and uh, Investigator. Sound good. Uh, and then for my Dynamic Advantages, I think probably Sharp Eyes and... Okay. Uh, Forensics, so trying to you know trying to see you know like the little tricks about like how the paint should break and things like that, um, and probably problem solving, just say like you know how to like what try to figure out how to place these in the in the scene. So it looks like five d six plus one two four six five d six plus six. Okay, so good. Yeah. Oh, Jen, yes, please roll. Uh, looks like quite a lot. Oh, yes. And 24 15. plus mod. Yeah, so 30. Oh, yeah, yeah you spend a few minutes um, sort of carefully prodding, lifting the pictures up, looking at the, the back, examining the little signature in the corner, doing the whole works on it. Um, well, probably the rest of you uh, sitting around watching him do this. Um, your conclusion at the end of it is that um, they are entirely exactly what uh, you thought they were. They are paintings a few years old, entirely legitimate. You probably you recognise the style. You don't necessarily recognise the specific artist who did it, but it's sort of a very much trend for these realistic. Uh, working class uh, images coming out of America. It's all very, very common, to be honest. It's, it's, it's not like proper European art. Um, so, um, but it's very gauche, uh, gauche, but yeah, they're entirely legit. And just as you sort of finishing that, you sort of like put the last picture back on the wall and you turn around and 
Newgate the butler is standing in the doorway uh, quietly, just watching you. I sort of unabashedly put the one that I was working with on the wall. I don't even say anything. And I, it, Actually, what I do say is I say, um, this art is uh, considerably more tacky than I was expecting. I wouldn't know, sir. Um, your rooms are ready. Um, would you like to follow me? We'll take you up to your rooms. Um, and without waiting for you to respond, he sort of leads the way out of the room. Um, takes you back into the hall with this Christmas tree and up the stairs. Um, big curving staircase, exactly like you imagine it. Um, and um, on the uh, first floor, this is UK first floor, just for ease of confusion, the thing which is on at the ground level is called the ground floor because it's at the ground level. The first floor is the first floor above the ground. <laughs> Uh, second floor, you should be able to work out. So charming. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I know. I, I've played with Americans before. I know I have to explain the basics. Um, with you lead you upstairs, and now um, Miss Maple and um, Miss Maple, Mr. Mallet, and Mr. Aston, you will all be given rooms on the first floor. Um, there's what's clearly three guest rooms, which each of you have put in one of them, and there's another door um, which uh, Newgate indicates is uh, Mr. Cheese's room. Um, so you're just sort of down the hall from Mr. Cheese. Um, after depositing you each in your own rooms, um, he leads uh, Mr. Derek upstairs again to the second floor and shows you into another guest room. Um, all the guest rooms are identical. There's, it, it's a perfectly comfortable bed, a perfectly ordinary wardrobe, a fireplace and a window, uh, bedside table. Everything looks clean and fresh and nice and um, aired, ready for use. Um, but other than that, they appear totally unremarkable. And um, as, as you deposit it in your rooms, Newgate will um, to inform you that uh, dinner uh, will be at 8. Um, the, we shall ring the gong when it's time to come downstairs. And with that, he leaves you alone in your rooms. Is there anyone, anyone want to do anything particular in their room? I want to leave and go to uh, Cheese's room. <laughs> OK. Yeah, you sort of like... <laughs> Come out of yours, you go down the stairs, first floor, uh, into the hallway. Uh, um, there, yep, you sort of, uh, Mr. Cheese's door is shut. Uh, I'll, I'll faintly, like, jiggle the handle, see if it's locked. Like, uh, I'm trying to, yeah. Okay, you sort of try to work out very carefully. No, yep. it's not locked. You okay. can do that just, you know, without opening the door, you can work that out. So I, like, spot, keep an eye out for anybody coming. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the knob and go in. Okay, um, you go in and um, it's, it's a bedroom. Um, obviously, quite a well-lived-in bedroom. Um, and lying on the bed, um, appears to be uh, quietly dozing, um, is who you recognise as Mr. Cheese, who is sort of late 50s, early 60s, that sort of age. But he's looking quite thin uh, and gaunt. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll start um, just sifting through anything I can get my hands on. Like, <coughs> excuse me, if I can get my hands on one of his uh, cabinets or, or dressers, I'll just pull it open and quietly rifle through, see if I find anything interesting. Okay, I, I think this could need an action as you're trying to do it quietly. What? Search. What? So, uh, yeah, um, give me some um, um, advantages. Sure, sure. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I want to make sure I know uh, how I'm doing this, right? So I want to use Investigator, uh, yep. which sort of makes sense. Investigator is uh, static. Correct. So that's, I can use two static things. That's right. Okay, got it. And I can use four not static things. That's right, dynamic. Okay, yes. cool, cool. So I'll use Investigator. It'll use alert, which is watchful and wary of what is happening. I want to make sure that nobody walks in on me and I'm, I'm saved. That's also static. Um, 
let's see. I, I'm taking notes throughout this whole thing. So I'll use note taking. I've got my little notepad out and I'm jotting down like, hmm, ducky covered boxers refers to childhood love of ducks. Um, <laughs> I will do search. I have search as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Do and is there any reason why I should like try and pull back from using as many as I possibly can? Or okay, as long as I can sort of make it make sense. As long as it makes sense. The thing to remember is that, that you know, if you use the wrong advantage and look specifically for something, it reduces the chances you're going to find something else. You know, Got so it. the more specific your your look, your advantages are, the Got it. less you might find. Okay, so I'm using <laughs> terribly sorry. Investigator alert, note taking, search, um, and I'll use manual. No, yeah, manual dexterity, right? Hand-eye coordination and nimbleness. How is that? Around, uh, I'm moving around quietly, and I'm just opening things quietly, sliding them closed quietly, focused on making sure I'm making no noise, very careful. Um, and the only other thing I could think of, and, and I have no idea if this actually would apply, but I am, spot is keeping an eye out, so I have my little white dog. Should I, does that count? Yes, it certainly does. It's helping you to do the action. So cool. it, that, of course, helps, yes. Cool, all right. So then that should be 66 plus 2, 3... Nothing. Uh, nothing. Nothing. And two, three, five. So sixty-six plus five. Okay. Oh, goodness. that's an awful roll. <laughs> uh, I got a sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Um, that's you're still a good score, though. On those dice, you should have done a bit better. <laughs> I would have okay. Hoped. Right, uh, yes, so th this bedroom is dominated by a large four-poster bed, contains a dressing table and a wardrobe, um, all the sort of like normal day-to-day -day living things are, are there, though there doesn't seem to be much in the way to make it a personal room, uh, there's no like photographs and things like that. Um, sort of like normal sort of like shaving equipment and things like that, but what's slightly out of place is you do spot a small makeup kit, you know, just amongst his other goods, um, and um, it's a bit odd, um, but you also in his drawers you do find some medicines, uh, things commonly used for pain relief, um, and yeah. there's, there's about two to four weeks supply, so we're talking a goodly no amount of medication there. Um, um, and you sort of looking through, and you that keep come back to that makeup kit. You keep thinking that was odd, and you look at it, um, yeah. you go back to it, and you sort of think, well, the only bits of the makeup kit which have been used um, is stuff which you'd put on if you're trying to make your skin look paler. Interesting. Okay. If you were trying to make your skin look paler, so like look worse. Interesting. Okay. And you just have that thought when um, Spot gives a little sort of low growl, alerting you that someone's coming up the stairs. Okay, yeah, I peek out the door. If I, if I have enough time, I'll jet back to my room, but if I don't have enough time, I'm going to have to find a place to stash myself here. Um, do you, you, yeah, you sort of um, have time. You sort of, like, quickly pop up, and you just run up the flight of stairs, just out of sight of the person um, who you think might be the um, new gate coming yes. upstairs. Um, I mean, your guess would be that it's probably new gate coming to wake his master to sure. help him get ready for dinner. Because Makes sense. That sort of time. Okay, uh, anyone else doing anything in their rooms? Or not in their rooms? Um, so I assume you're sort of freshening up, getting changed for dinner, and um, at about at eight o'clock precisely, uh, the gong will will ring, uh, summoning you for dinner, um, and um, you sort of all sort of make yourself make your way downstairs and back into the drawing room. Um, and sort of you get sorted out with drinks and things like that, so you're getting yourself comfortable. And when Mr. Cheese comes in, um, he's looking old and frail, uh, much worse than the recent photos you've seen of him um, suggested. And uh, he's walking slowly in the room with a couple of walking sticks, his skin's pale, and he looks gaunt. Um, but as he speaks to you, you recognise his voice is still strong and he's got a 
heavy Cockney accent, um, tempered by a faint American uh, twang, you notice. You know, clearly evidence of the years he spent in the States. And um, he greets each one of you in turn um, and sort of uh, and congratulates you on your sort of most recent case, whatever that happened to be. He sort of has a good word and sort of you know compliments you or makes a quick bit of a quick about uh, you know how you've captured the, your villain this time round. Um, and then um, sort of uh, looks around and makes sure you've all got um, drinks um, and says. Well, uh, Lady, gentlemen, I, I propose a toast. Um, I propose a toast to the king. And he sort of uh, drinks it down. Uh -huh. um, sure. Are all of you drinking? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm going to smell it roll. first. <laughs> uh, okay, you sort of smile back. And then, and then he says, and, and a second toast, uh, a second toast. To the truth, he sort of knocks back uh, a, a another whiskey. I'm right there with him. I knock back another milk. Man, tell you Spot that yap. <laughs> yeah, the kid's got a drinking problem. That's all I'm saying. Okay, um, so. Um, you have a few minutes to chat with Mr. Cheese and um, make polite small talk before dinner. Anything you wish to ask or talk to the, the host about? So, Mr. Cheese, uh, how much did this place cost? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. M young Mr. Derek, ah, uh, yes. Uh, I I took a um, it took a large amount of my ill-gotten gains. Hmm. Hmm. So you purchased this place off of the uh, profits of criminal activity. I I purchased this place out of the profits from hard work. <laughs> oh, that's that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. How are you feeling lately, Mr. Cheese? Oh, well, I'm dying. How do you think I feel? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm always interested in the human perspective and, uh, you know, especially on, on things that we will all face, such as mortality. And so do you, do you feel like you, you have something you need to get off of your chest? Ah, uh, the <laughs> impertinence of youth. Ah, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We shall get to all of that. Come on, let let, let let's. I think it. I think dinner is ready. Um, <laughs> let let us go through um, to um, the dining room, and he's with that. He sort of uh, guides you in um, to through a connecting door from the drawing room into the dining room, uh, which um, is dominated by a big table. Um, set out for uh, five of you, isn't there? Uh, but could comfortably hold about eight people, you'd say. Beautiful silverware, nice cut glasses, everything you'd sort of expect. Um, sort, of, um, sort of, well, de decorated in the same style um, with, um, you know, wall, um, a wood, wooden walls, you know, wood coated walls and panelled walls and artworks and Christmas decorations adorn the walls. Um, and sort of everyone sits down. Um, he sits at the head of the table. Where is everyone else sitting? Right next to him. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit at the end by uh, Maple. Okay, it's sort of leaving. Uh, one place. Uh, for I think I would actually sit down right next to uh, Mr. Aston because he, of course, is the most refined gentleman here. <laughs> uh, so I'll sit by the kid, I guess. Um, put a chair in, you know, I'll scoot in for the old lady and move around. <laughs> um, 
and um, yeah, and as you sort of sit down, um, Newgate um, will sort of come through and start serving food. Um, he's being assisted by um, the maid, um, who you gather is called uh, Mary. Um, um, she's she's helping um, serve as well, and you sort of. Um, Dinner goes excellently. Um, the food is good. Uh, Miss Cheese proves to be an excellent host, um, and he sort of uh, he regales you with tales of his gangster glory days. Um, and yeah, you sort of swap tales about your cases and things like that. And you, you actually genuinely have a good time. He's, he's a very charming uh, gentleman. Uh, but by the end of the dinner. He is clearly looking tired and weak, um, and he uh, apologizes and retires to bed before the coffee is served. Um, and he says, um, "Gentlemen, ladies, um, uh, you will forgive me, but I am not the man I once was. Um, you do feel free to enjoy yourself. Um, Newgate will happily sort out whatever you need, uh, but I have to go to bed. And uh, I look forward to tomorrow when we will have, um, I think, a most interesting day. And sort of with that sort of uh, Newgate sort of helps him out of the room, um, leaving you alone. Are you serious? Are you really leaving on this, Mr. Cheese? Come on, it's like a couple minutes. Why don't you tell us what's going on here? I mean, I think the kid's about to die of anticipation. Um, it gives us like a cheery wave over, well, sort of half, quite a feeble wave over his shoulder. And you, you know, you, like, you're not the most sensitive person in the world, but you definitely get the sense actually, no, this is a man who is ill um, and clearly looks quite tired. Mark, you muted. What, what, day, what day is today? Is it actually Christmas Eve? It's Christmas Eve, yes. Okay. Uh, so I say, um, uh, understandably, that you would need to retire, but uh, and uh, it's very inappropriate for the American, of course, to ask you to stay. But it is tradition sometimes to offer a single present on Christmas Eve, is it not? One present. One present question one clue? Is that too much to ask? Oh, um, he smiles. Uh, well, uh, in, in my house, um, we didn't have much when I grew up. We just got one present, and that was on Christmas Day. So let's see uh, what tomorrow brings. Very well. Okay. And yeah, Newgate leads him away. Is Mary still there? I totally want to ask her about her family and her Christmas plans. Uh, yes, uh, Mary's sort of like clearing a few uh, dishes up and sort of uh, topping up your glasses. So yeah, Mary, Mary's around. I'm totally going to small talk with her. Okay, go like for it. At the manor, the whole thing. So you're just probing for gossip, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, underlying anything else, but mostly just gossip. Yeah. Uh, okay, go for it. All right. So um, I'm going to use domestic service mm -hmm. because that seems apt. Uh, small talk, psychology, empathy. Um, what do you guys think about village life? I think this is probably the greatest chance we have of being able to use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not untrue. I mean, what does the actual advantage say on it? Uh, living in a village, small town, or other close-knit community. So um, the one way of reading that would be to say that you know you, you used to sort of exchanging tittle tattle and the sort of things uh, which would you know interest a servant and things. So yeah, I mean I, I'm sort of happy to use it. I mean of course if she turns out to be from a big city, you might be less effective. Sure. Um, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, plus two, three. Mm 
Thirteen, seventeen, twenty. Twenty, excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, she um, she sort of does, tries to a sort of um, polite sort of uh, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am sort of thing at, at first, but you sort of reel her in. Um, uh, you sort of like you know just um, sort of uh, you're you're just so experienced at talking to people like this. Um, things you immediately notice. She, she's in a late. 20s, she's very pretty, she's red haired, um, and you notice immediately when she starts to talk, because you hadn't really heard her say anything before, that she's got a quite a strong, lilting Irish accent. Um, very, very nice accent, and um, you will um, peg her as being from um, County Kerry. Uh, which is western and particularly impoverished part of Ireland at that time. Um, quite a lot of um, you know Irish people from that area were the ones who sort of went across to New York. And in fact, uh, Mr. Mallet, uh, you will have um, met many people uh, with that sort of accent before. In fact, actually, um, yeah, you sort of um, you've, you've actually known quite a few quite well. You you remember a, a particular girl from County Kerry? You met before, and she um, died an unfortunate death. Yeah, well, you know, what are you gonna do? You walk a uh, long walk off a short pier, but hey, she talked to the wrong people. Um, yeah, very much so. I mean, in fact, uh, you know, you sort of. Um, um, you you remember so you you pumped her for some information on the White Hand Gang, and she turned up later dead with a pin stuck through her lips, sealing them together. Yeah. Well, you know, talking to her was nice, but yeah, there's a real bummer about that. I don't like the White Hand Gang at all. They look at all similar. You think maybe they're related or? I'll definitely chat her up. I don't want to interrupt Miss Maple here, though. But I'm definitely uh, going to be talking to Mary later. Um, yeah, that that's um, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe she looks familiar, but to be honest, you know, all these names look the same. You know. Hey, yeah, you said it. I didn't, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. The, Jen, uh, sorry, Miss Maple, you, um, yeah, you, she seems polite and um, reasonably efficient. Um, again, doesn't sort of give much away. Um, and sort of it seems to be trying to get out of the um, conversation as quickly as possible. How's her tea? That's the important part. Um, it, it's, it's adequate rather than good. <laughs> You've certainly had it worse. Um, so um, yeah, I mean the um, the room is yours, the drinks cabinet is yours. Um, it's about sort of ten o'clock at night ish time. Um, in the uh, sort of like Mr. Newgate will come back down after a few minutes and sort of hover quietly in a corner, topping up your glasses for as long as you want it. Well, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild. What about Mary? Is she sticking around? I mean, it's it's Christmas Eve. Has she got anybody she needs to get back to? Is she gonna be able to help? Uh, I don't know, clear plates. Or... Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'll she... make some more dirty. I'll make more dirty plates. You know, that's what I'm saying. Is that's the requirement? Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it's not hard to um, angle for the fact that um, you two sort of like. Make sure she hangs around, um, and uh, yeah, she sort of like she she seems a bit cool to you, um, and um, sort of recognizes what you're doing. You'd say, I hey, Mary, you, I mean, if you got something to go to, I, that's fine. I thought you can have yeah. a couple laughs. You want a drink? Uh, I, I'm it's open bar. You know, new gays, you know, hook us up. <laughs> I'm uh, working, sir, um, and I'll be working all day tomorrow. Well, when do you get off tonight? Uh, when I go to bed, sir. That is the way of a servant. 
Man, you have to get vacation or something? No, sir. Um, I, there's a need to... Um, um, you just excuse me, I'll take these dishes through to the kitchen. Um, I'm sure Mrs. Baxter will want to get cleaned up and uh, ready for tomorrow. No, servants, where you're from, Mallet. Um, <clears throat> just slaves. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the reminder there, Aston. Yeah. More or less, uh, yeah, the servants that we have, I don't have them, any of them. So, you know, 40 or so years ago, we took care of that problem. Still working it out. I see. Well, excuse me. I believe that the festivities of the evening have exhausted my simple mind. I shall retire. You don't have any more pictures to, like, poke and remove around? You bored of that? I thought there was some going up the stairs. There's a couple in my room you want to go play, and they're poking them around. And... As open-minded as you are, Mr. Mallet, I believe that it would be best if I retired alone. Perhaps you and the child will have some adventures. You appear to have similar <laughs> consumption habits. And I just sort of like grab my coat or whatever I have and I put it on and sort of like pop the collar up a little bit and, and like get get as far away from you all as I can get. <laughs> oh wait, before I leave I do say to Miss Maple, I say I say, a pleasure as always, Miss Maple. We are all blessed and enlightened by your presence. As and ever, then, thank you, Mr. Eston. And then I leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you will head up the whole way up to up to your bedroom. And then there were three. Um, so um, yeah, I mean the the servants will keep plying you with drinks for as long as you wish. Um, so um, is there anything the rest of you wish to do? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's I think it's a uh, retiring time for Miss Maple as well. Uh, Mr. Derrick, please, oh, sorry. Go ahead. please help me. Please help me up the stairs, Mr. Derrick. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I am, like, so thrilled I am beaming as I help you up the stairs. And I tell you to slow down at least three times. Yes. At least three. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> oh, Miss Mabel, I just I I every single case you've ever done, I've studied them. Oh my, they're they're just what you did that one time in the in the courthouse. Oh my goodness, Miss Mabel, can I just say I'm your biggest fan? Well, that's very sweet. What? Uh, how many cases have you done? I don't. Uh, I've heard your name. Oh well, I I don't I don't think of them so much as cases as I think of them as adventures. My my most recent one was was the the adventure the, of the Sultan's ruby. And it was like, it was, and I just start going. I just start going. <laughs> my and I'm eyes sort of roll. I'm nodding, the but I'm not listening. I'm just, oh, that's lovely, dear. Uh huh. <laughs> but I am like, you were so into this. I'm talking to Miss Mabel. <laughs> Uh, you you uh, happily reach your room, uh, Miss Maple. You find you can walk quite quickly uh, uh, <laughs> when Derek's talking. <laughs> um, so, uh, Mr. Mallet, you are left down in the drawing room alone. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll grab a bottle and head up to the room. Not much uh, going on here. Okay, and yeah, so you all head up to your rooms. Um, you'll settle down for the night. Is there anything any of you are particularly doing uh, before you settle down? Okay, yeah, you get into bed, and you'll fall asleep nice and quiet, nice quiet house, and um, you awake. Um, you all awake, obviously, in your own rooms, um, to see a steaming cup of tea. Um, on your bedside table, and the sound of a bedroom, the bedroom door being gently shut. A stocking hangs from the mantelpiece with a brightly wrapped present sticking out of it. Um, and you glance out the window and you notice um, it seems like a winter wonderland out of there. The sky is blue, the sun is shining, but everything is white, covered in uh, um, 
several feet of pristine snow. In the trees, large icicles are formed and catching the light and giving everything a magical look. You know, it is your absolutely perfect white Christmas sort of image. Um, it could be straight off a Christmas card. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so, uh, we'll start off with you, um, uh, Bryce Derrick. What are you doing? You muted. Did, did Santa come? Oh, Santa has come, yes. I, I, so the stocking or the gift, yeah, I'm going straight to them and I'm just going to rip it open. Okay, yeah, you grab it, rip it, bits of paper flying everywhere, spot ripping up into the paper as well. Um, Good boy. And, yeah, and you've got a book. Uh, it's the Times Atlas of the World. Um, it's, it's a large atlas focusing mostly on the British Empire, it has to be said. Um, but there is also, hidden in the bottom of the stocking, uh, you notice there's a, uh, a bone with a little ribbon tied around it. Like a what kind of bone? As in the bone you'd give to a dog. Oh, okay. Not right. a human tibia or anything. We're talking about like a, a human... Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I'm going to tie the bow. I'm like, here you go, Spot. And I just start reading the book. Starting at the very first page, and I'm just going to start looking through it page after page after page. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's beautifully. It tells you exactly how wonderful the British Empire is. Large amounts of the map are in red. You know, and, uh, you know, wow. the, 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 other, the other bits don't get many pages, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, you're looking through and you go, um, oh, been there, been there, been there, you know. <laughs> check, check, check. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, um, Benny Mallet, what are you doing? Well, I kind of jump when they get the T in the sneak of the ninjas. <laughs> but then um, I look around, that's, that's beautiful out there. It's, it's like a Norman Rockwell painting. It's, it's really nice. So uh, I'll have this tea, which probably tastes like ass, and then um, I'll open up the present. Actually, for you, it's probably a cup of black coffee. Uh, oh, well, in that case, then, yeah. Previous, co the previous comments rescinded. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink my coffee and then open this, um, this present up. Oh, yeah. Um, you've also got a book, uh, Heroes of the American West. A rather gaudy and low-brow book on the famous gunslingers of the American West. Hmm. Y'all check the binding, see if there's anything in here. Is this like some kind of, you know, like prisoners? You know, they will cut stuff out of the book and put things inside. So I'll flip through all the pages, smell it, see if it smells like lemon. I heard you write stuff in lemon, and like burn it, and, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. You you spend a few minutes carefully examining this book, and it is definitely just a book. All right, I'll toss it on the bed and get dressed. Okay, uh, Miss Maple. Well, I drink the the tea, of course. Uh -huh. The the present won't. Uh, it it will keep. The tea would get cold, and that would be a shame. So you're so just sort of sitting there in bed. Mm -hmm. Delicately drinking tea. Enjoying the view. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And uh, finally, Mr. Aston. You muted, Mark. No, no, I'm just thinking. I'm, no. I'm suspicious of the tea, as I'm suspicious of all things and all people. But I think probably I can't imagine a host who would, you know, mess around with tea. It's just, you know... Uncivilized, so I'll, I'll preposterous. Right? So I will, I will stand at the window and drink my tea as well. Oh, sort of strange, dramatic, yeah, English pose, sort of uh, yes. staring out the window, drinking your tea. And then I will, and then I will set the book on the table, set the present on the table, and I will look at it really hard before opening it to try to, you know, as if because it's really interesting that something is wrapped. Right, and see if I can see if I can detect what it is inside bec before I open it. Okay, yeah, you, you you sort of you sort of got to set it up on the table, and you're sort of standing there looking at it from different angles, trying 
the workout, double guess uh, Mr. Cheese's uh, thought patterns. Um, when you are completely distracted, and uh, all of you are completely distracted from your activities, by a scream, a loud female scream, um, coming from somewhere around the back of the house, you're not entirely sure where, um, but it, it's a genuine sort of something horrible has happened scream. Um, so how are you reacting, Mr. Aston? What are you doing? I will grab the still wrapped presents, which I, appear, I, I assume is in book form. Like it looks yeah. like a book. It yeah, looks like a book. I will, I will grab the book wrapped still, and I will calmly but decisively walk towards the direction of the screen. Okay, Miss Maple? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving the, the present in the stocking, and I will make my way towards the screen, um, although I don't rush. That's undignified. Uh, okay, Mr. Mallet. Oh, well, you know, I'm grabbing my 9mm, and I'm running down the stairs as quick as I can. I was already getting dressed, so I just kind of flip my suspenders on, and then I'm running. Uh, okay, and Derek, Mr. Derek. Come on, Spot! It sounds like there's trouble! <laughs> We're just running, and I'm still wearing my pajamas. <laughs> okay. Um, you um, run down the stairs, full pelt, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, bits of wrapping paper probably trailing after you. Um, even though you're starting on the second floor, you'll probably get... Uh, downstairs, uh, faster, sort of even faster than Mr. Mallet, who's got a head start on you because you you're just so young and eager. Um, but you, you're not very far behind becomes Mr. Mallet, and obviously uh, Miss Maple and Mr. Aston are taking their time. You sort of run downstairs, you sort of glance around, you sort of work out the screen must have come from sort of like the kitchen area somewhere around that. So you run through the drawing room, run through the dining room into the sort of servants' quarters, and you burst into the kitchen. Um, so uh, you, Mr. Derek and Mr. Um, uh, Mallet, you sort of burst into the kitchen, and you can see uh, Mary, uh, the maid, um, sort of, uh, sort of, or being comforted. Uh, she looks quite distraught, um, being comforted by um, a, a sort of a middle-aged, plump middle-aged woman who you immediately guess to be the cook. Um, there's Newgate um, is sort of like just come running in as well um, and also there's a sort of a young sort of boyish um, character you guess to be some minor servant uh, sort of standing there looking around sort of like trying to work out what's happening the door to the outside the back door to the outside is standing open um, so you get there first Mr. Derek what are you doing? What's wrong? I'll be actually moving towards that back door to look outside, surmising that something out there may have been what caught their attention. But I'm gonna, I'm just, what's wrong? What happened? Uh, Mary goes, uh, Mr. Henry, Mr. Henry! And so he's pointing out the back door. Yeah, I go look at the back door. Um, you look out, and you can see there's a sort of a, a cottage um, about 20 uh, yards across the... Um, what you guess must be a courtyard, but everything's covered in pristine snow. There's a set of footprints obviously going to the cottage, and you can see the uh, cottage door is standing open, uh, but that is all you can see. Okay, I'll try and hop in the footprints that are already there to get to the cottage. Okay, so you're running through the snow to the cottage. Um, Mr. M uh, Mallet, you sort of uh, arrive next. You can just see the kid reporter legging it out uh, the back door. I, do, I follow his instincts, you know. The kid's pretty smart. Okay, so two of you sort of like run, sort of hopping through the snow, trying to keep uh, in the footprints, um, to the cottage. Um, it's um, a small building, um, sort of like just a sort of very sort of simple bedroom um, and a kitchen living room. Um, you sort of like standing in the doorway looking in, um, and you can see that um, in there's a sort of like little fireplace, and there's a comfy chair in front of the fireplace, a table, and some what you can clearly see is Henry's body slumped over the table, uh, he's sitting in the chair, and is sort of fallen forward over the table. Uh, I'll go to him, is he dead? Yeah. 
Um, yes, um, you can see blood, um, clotted blood around the back of his head, um, and just from the colour of his skin, you're going to say, yeah, he's well dead. You've both seen enough dead bodies just to go, yeah, that's dead. You all right, kid? We shouldn't touch anything. This is a crime scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You shouldn't be touching dead bodies anyway, kid. No, but maybe there's something we could get off of him. What do you mean? Well, I'd have to get my science kit to find out. I mean, I'm, I'm looking all around the body at this point, trying to, like, gauge if there's anything else odd here. Uh, you know, the gauge, like, the, the blow to the head clearly came from behind. That kind of stuff. Um, just looking to see if there's anything other terribly noteworthy or out of place around here. Okay, so you're going to sort of looking at the the body and the yeah. immediate crime scene. Um, okay, so just think about your advantages while you're doing that. I'll just sure. cut across to Miss Maple and uh, Mr. Aston, who will reach into the kitchen at this point. So uh, you've seen there, yeah, you've got basically all the servants sort of um, gathered in the kitchen. Um, there's Mary, uh, the maid, uh, sort of sitting there being distort. Looks like she's been given a, a, a little sh um, tumbler of something strong uh, by the cook. So I want, I want to, like, look, look around and see if someone is lying. I mean, like, does anybody look suspicious? Okay, yeah, so you're just going on their sort of like body languages, anyone's sort of looking shifty and... Right, yeah, well, somebody hiding something. Okay, well, um, give me some uh, advantages for that. Great, so I will use, uh, let's see, um, I'm going to use intelligence, because it's government intelligence, and okay. investigator. And as for dynamic, I'm going to use memory to, well, let's see, hold on. I want to use, I want to use sharp eyes and problem solving. And uh, what's the problem you're solving? I want to solve. I want to. Pro I want to solve the problem of who's responsible for for whatever is happening, right? Because if clearly if they're running out, I know something is up, and I want to know who's who is attached to it or responsible for it. Um, okay. And I'll use alerts, uh, and I'll use. I will use memory to see. I've seen these people before, and I saw them in their ordinary lives. And I want to see if I can notice any differences between now and then. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you you haven't seen all of these, but a couple of people here you haven't seen before, but certainly the ones you had seen before. Sure. You, uh, okay. Um, so that's sixty-six plus four. Okay. Um, Miss Maple. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll we'll just do your dice roll. Uh, that looks good. Uh, oh, that's very good. Okay. Um, yeah, the what you spot is that yeah, I mean clearly um, uh, Mary is upset. You you can pretty much work out she's the one who screamed. Uh, yeah, putting the facts together. Um, you've seen enough um, of these things that you know she really looks like someone who's um, found a body. Yeah, you, you've, you've seen this before. So it looks like someone who's had a shock of finding a body. Um, the everyone else, sort of the cook, the uh, Newgate, and the uh, the boy, are sort of like got standing around of saying, "Oh, don't know what to do." Um, sort of look about them. Um, so it looks or to be a fairly sort of routine scene for this sort of case for a murder, but there is just something slightly. Odd. You can't quite put your th finger on, but there's something wrong um, to this scene. Uh, Miss Maple, what are you doing? Uh, I have a question for you. I have um, an advantage of cooperative, and it says help another character in an action without adding situation bonuses. Yep. Um, if, if you do that, uh, normally when um, two characters want to get together to do something, um, there's a penalty for you know, the overhead of working together. Um, you can do it without incurring that penalty. Obviously, you need to be able to talk and communicate and sort of, you know, make a plan, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, thanks. Hmm. 
Well, I mean, obviously I'm in my house coat, so I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. Mm hmm Or are you? Um. I don't think Miss Maple sleeps naked. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just gonna talk to the people. Like, I mean, obviously they're, you know, they're in a state, and, uh, um... I, I want to see, like, wh what did they think happened, and what's going on, and who was the last person who saw him, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, as you sort of, uh, yeah, the, uh, um, Mary is obviously the uh, obvious one to uh, talk to, okay. um, you sort of, sort of, like, sort of, yeah, you know, go up to him and say, uh, oh, uh, mom, the, uh, it's Henry, Henry, uh, something's horrid happened to him, I think he's dead, he, He's in his house. He's in his cottage. Gesturing to the door. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's just go back to the cottage. Uh, what were you doing, uh, Mallet? Well, you know, the kid and I had taken a look at the body. I'd kind of like to see is this, like, blow to the head? Was he shot? Shot, we probably heard it. I imagine the footsteps coming in were Mary. Which, by the way, I'm very thankful she wasn't killed because she's, you know, usually the kind of person that dies in these kind of situations. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, in your experience. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And I'm looking for any kind of, what's it they call it, egress? You know, mm. how do you get out of here? Yeah. Um, the, yeah, okay, so um, you're looking at the body, you sort of, okay, so let, let's go through your action, so um, we'll start with you, uh, Rich, so put me together through your action as you sort of look around the cottage, <laughs> well, you're telling the body was sort of like your priority, wasn't it, trying to work out cause of death. Yeah, I'm not so good at that. Pretty much all my stuff is uh, related around beating people and talking to them, and he's dead, so neither of those really help. <laughs> I think I'm scowling in the corner and letting the kid figure it out. Okay, uh, scowling in the corner. A kid, what are you figuring out? Everything. I am like NCIS and CSI rolled up into one. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I go into full-on like investigator mode, and um, I want to use investigator um, for one static. I want to use... Uh, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm thinking researcher for another static. I am relying on my knowledge because researcher refers to scientific experimentation and academic research. So unless that refers to specifically the act of researching, which you can tell me um, if it does. But I was thinking it refers to like I've studied anatomical textbooks, right? I've I read every single goddamn book I can get my hands on. Uh, so like I know like how things look, and I've read textbooks of murder victims and and seen lots of lithographs and. Uh, yeah, I, I am relying on my knowledge, my textbook knowledge, uh, for that. I wanted to use, similarly, forensics, careful systematic collection and analysis of physical evidence from crime scenes and suspects. I'm, I'm carefully, like, I'm trying to look for, like, maybe something that's, that's uh, a napkin or something, like something I can tear up and leaving little tags on things that I think are noteworthy pieces of evidence uh, so that I know I can study them later, and I'm just, like, moving my head around them, making sure I, I examine them before. I will later come back and pick them up carefully. And um, search, actively investigate an area, moving around it and examining its contents closely. Okay, yeah, that that's, that all sounds great. Yeah, with the research, with the obvious advantages, the only thing all of us, including me, have to go on is what's on the advantage. So if your explanation for your research is, yeah, you read all these books and you, you sort of got background knowledge, that works. That makes sense with your character. So that's cool. really good. Okay, I'm cool with that. So I am rolling uh, plus 46 plus 2, it looks like right now. Here we go. Uh -huh. So that is an 18 plus 2 is a 20. Oh, that's good. Uh, okay, uh, let me just go through this. Um, yeah, first of all, so um, click glance around the cottage. It looks like a lived-in place. It looks like someone's home, a uh, bachelor, you know, very much fitting in keeping with what you've seen of this, of Henry. Um, Henry himself, he's 
sitting um, in his comfy chair, he slumped uh, face down over a blood-stained newspaper. Um, by him, uh, there's a knocked-over beer glass, and there's beer and blood, and um, the newspaper all made a soggy mess on the table. Um, and all this is sort of like, you know, the chair and table are sort of like in front of a fireplace. So your immediate thought is, here's somebody who's finished work for the night, sat down with a beer in front of a fireplace, nice and warm, um, to sort of wind down for the evening. So um, very much a man comfortable. All the blood trails from his head and the table uh, all match. So there's no evidence he's been moved. You're pretty confident he died where he, you found him. Um, there's um, the body's cold, so he's been dead several hours, and um, the back of his skull is caved in. So definitely um, blunt object to the back of the head. Um, probably it probably took several blows to kill him, but you suspect the first blow would have knocked him out. Um, so um, um, sort of that sort of thing, and yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where it, where you'd get to, sort of like, yeah, dead. Just, just to check, can I see what date the newspaper is for? Uh, yes, you can just make it out. It was yesterday's newspaper, okay, so Christmas Eve newspaper. Got it. Yeah, the, uh, the appropriate one. So, yeah, I'm muttering a lot of that out loud as I'm looking around. and like, would have taken several blows to cave in the skull like this. <laughs> Um, and, w and when I'm done, I turn to Vinny and I'm like, we should go back in there and make everybody stay in the same room. Any one of us could be a murderer. Well, well, I mean, like, probably not you and probably not Miss Maple. I don't know about Mr. Aston. I don't know. This looks like it took some effort. Might be a little below him. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, let's head uh, inside. Okay, um, so uh, back in the kitchen, uh, Miss Maple and uh, Mark, you, you actually wanted to make an action, didn't you? So, yes. Oh, no, you did your action, didn't you? Yes, because a gen rolled it for you. Um, so, yeah, back in the kitchen, uh, what are the two of you doing? Uh, I'm going to ask, I'll ask the, the servants, you know, what happened here. Uh, we, I went to take um, Henry a cup of tea because he hadn't turned up for breakfast and I just went over and knocked on the door but no answer, I opened the door and I could see him, I could see blood and I screamed Is that unusual, that you would not be able to find him? Um, yeah, he's all very good he always turns up for breakfast, we just assumed he was sort of like maybe he'd uh, started work on something or already I mean, um, no, he's, so he, he, he's always very nice and um, so he keeps a very regular schedule then, yes oh, oh, oh yes, yes um, very, very nice man Mr. Henry then why what happened to him what do I you... don't know I don't you... know you know something, don't you? Something that you are keeping from the rest of us as if you are protecting us from something. But you know. The, the, the cook uh, sort of looks, oh, excuse me, sir. This woman's in shock. How dare you? Um, How dare you serve us what you served us last night and then come in here and attempt to tell us that you know anything. I turn my attention back to her. <laughs> Speak to me, Mister Cheese will hear about this. And detective, or no detective, you don't speak to people like that. I think you should go tell Mister Cheese right now. Um, uh, Newgate, sort of. Uh, Mrs. Baxter, Mrs. Baxter, just let them do their thing. Um, I, I'm going to go and speak to Mister um, Cheese about the the gentleman. I turn my attention back to the girl. So, what do you know? I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Lying. Mr. Aston. That's <laughs> she knows something. Enough. She knows something, Miss Maple. Look at her. You know. But you're never going to get it out of her, treating her like that. I can assure you that everyone has a breaking point. Inevitably. 
Well, ideally, we would like to not break every single member of this staff. There must be a more efficient way. Oh, of course. I'll step back. I just nearly lost my focus. And I'll, and I'll just sort of gently take, push the girl kind of over to Miss Maple and, like, give her kind of a wink, like, <laughs> okay, now you take over here, right, and, and step, step back. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue what I was doing before uh, we uh, sort of switch back, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out, like, if Henry had any enemies, um, how, how well-liked he was. Also, I'm concentrating on, like, where each of the staff members were last night or and or this morning. Um, yeah, uh, probably best to sort of, like, focus on one thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, so... Yeah, we'll stick with uh, if he uh, anyone who would uh, wish him ill will. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, go. Give me an action on that. Um, all right. We are doing psychology. Um, hmm, empathy. Problem solving. Um, I, I kind of want to use cooperative because I'm building on Mr. Aston's sort of Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do that. Yeah, you're sort of doing the tag team, good cop, mm -hmm. bad cop. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about criminologist because I don't think Mary's a criminal. I mean, there has been a crime, but... What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it could be used, but it could, it could go either way, you know. It, it, it might it might actually be a disadvantage, so uh, yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. I have forty six. Um plus one, two, three. But I'm also going to be rolling some dice here. Uh, I'm gonna be rolling three dice plus three. Okay. Uh, so what do you get? Twenty two. Twenty two and I got ten, fourteen, seventeen, yes. Um but you very much. Um, she 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 see blabbers that um, that uh, oh Mr H Henry was very nice. We all liked him. Um, he was ever so friendly. Um, you know, it, no one had a bad word to say about him. He he was yeah, it was so nice. Well, someone but, did obviously. Yeah, but as she's saying this, she's not lying. She you're confident she isn't lying. But there's something not right uh, about the whole truth. Yeah, well, sort of. Yeah, they're, they're sort of like yeah. Um, there's almost maybe sort of remorse involved in you know in the tone of her voice when she's talking mm. about Henry. You know, this sort of remorse rather than sort of um, anything else. You, but you also get the impression this whole shock. Business, you know, and sort of like flustered and things. It might be a bit exaggerated. Okay. Okay. Uh, While well, you're chewing on that, let's go back to the uh, cottage. Well, I mean, Mr. Mallet, we we should go back and make sure. Uh, everybody, everybody is locked into one room. So just we can't let somebody here on this estate probably did this, and I need to get my tools so that I can perform the proper forensic assessments here. There's a glimmer of a smile in my face that I can't hide when I talk about doing a forensic assessment. Um, don't you think? Yeah, it's not like we can do anything for this poor guy. So let's uh, let's go gather people up. I'll, yeah, okay. I, I'll go hopping back to the kitchen. Okay, yep, yeah, after all, you are all partially dressed and you have been running through the snow, or at least some of you have been. Uh, so the two of you sort of return uh, to the kitchen uh, where you uh, yeah, come across a scene um, with the um, servants and Mr. Aston and Miss Maple. 
Um, um, and so you, you can have a brief exchange of uh, information. Um, well, we are sort of like coming up to time, um, so we're, we're, you're not going to get to solve the entire case. Um, so um, probably if you would like to, to talk amongst yourselves, just to articulate your current theories about what is happening um, before we wrap up. Should we be doing this? Do you want us to do this in character, or do you want us to do? I think it's about for you to do it in character. You, sure. you can also like get together in a uh, in the drawing room and have a quiet conversation. <laughs> what did you find outside? A dead body. Mm. Obviously. <laughs> yes, thank you. Miss Maple's words cut me. <laughs> As well, they should. So Henry, the gardener, got whacked on the back of the head, right? That's that would look like a blunt force trauma. Yeah, he would have been hit once and knocked out, but then hit many more times and then killed. It's obvious that whoever did it really did it with the intent to murder. It wasn't an accident. Well, as fascinating as this case is, I'm afraid it is not fascinating at all. Someone murdered him. It's not important. Sooner or later, the police will arrive and solve the case. Is there anything about it that is remarkable in any way, shape, or form. Did you not hear what Mary said? She's involved, somehow, I believe. Well, quickly, stop the presses. The Someone who knew the victim may be affiliated with the killer. That is quite a shock. Also, we can't ignore a murder on the eve before Mr. Cheese is about to come forward with the story of a century, especially when Mr. Cheese himself seems to be hiding something. It is likely that 21 people were murdered last night. That is the yearly average, every year, like clockwork. You're such a downer. Do you, do you ignore their murders as well, Mr. Kid? What is your name again? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Derek. Derek. <laughs> Mr. Derek. Yes, Mr. Of course, Mr. Derek. Derek. Yes, yes, of course. Do, do you choose to ignore their murders as well? Unfortunately, we do not have time to chase down every last uninteresting murder. So, I believe that unless Mr. Cheese has something important to say, I have a book waiting back in my flat. I say we go up to his room, and we just throttle Mr. Cheese until he tells us what's going on. As blunt as the American is, he does not waste my patience. Yes, Mr. Mallet, please, lead on. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, we will, we, I think we will stop the adventure there uh, before we get to a very, un, I'm not going to but a very effective method. I'm not, I'm not attending that. I'm not going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> that was my delicate sensibility. <laughs> Ms. Mabel, maybe you ought to stay here. <laughs> as long as I'm not the like one doing this scene. But yeah, I'll tell you what, it'll be easy to solve. <laughs> I, I will not strangle anybody, but if I am present while Mr. Mallet strangles someone and happen to ask questions, I think it'd be best for all of us. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, obviously we're, we're not going to get time to uh, finish in. This would be uh, a sort of a good point to uh, stop the adventure. Would you like to know what was going on? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, how the game will play, as you sort of investigate the uh, murder, um, with a bit more poking around uh, on the murder scene, you'll discover he was um, murdered, um, or you deduce he was murdered with a um, um, icicle, um, a big heavy icicle had sort of been removed from the side of the house, and uh, you find sort of like... Uh, water on the floor and deduced that he'd been beaten over the head by an icicle and then it had been left to melt in front of a roaring fire. Um, having discovered this information, you sort of then, Mr. Cheese tells you to sort of go and investigate this crime, this terrible crime, um, and you go off and question all the um, servants and you um, search the rooms and things like that. And you, as you're doing this, there are attempts on your lives. Um, someone will take a uh, pot shot um, at um, the private eye, you know, 
from you'll just be walking down the stairs and someone has shot for some come from somewhere and by the time you sort of chase it down they've gone. Um, similar thing happens with the kid reporter. Poison dart is fired at the kid reporter. Um, someone tries to kill the uh, Mr. Aston um, by um, the sort of the banister on the stairs as he puts his hands on it, gives way and he just sort of thing. And you sort of like trying to of all these people trying to kill each of you and then just as the final scene is you all gather in the drawing room you suddenly realise all the staff are in on it and you're sort of in the drawing room and you've got all the staff and it becomes apparent that each of you has a reason to murder one of you um, it turns out Newgate is there to murder uh, Mr Aston um, um, the cook is there to murder uh, Miss Maple um, the hall boy is there to murder Kid Reporter, and Mary the Maid is there to murder um, the Private Eye. Each yeah. of you, for, each of you, for cases for, uh, for things which happened in your past. So yes, you are absolutely right, Rich. Uh, you did recognise her the sister, um, and she was getting back to you because you didn't care about her sister. You just let her die. Um, Miss Maple, uh, you solved a case um, which sent um, um, the cook's uh, parents, um, well, one of them to the gallows and one of them um, ended up taking his own life in shame. Um, um, Kid reported you broke up an opium ring in Shanghai and Tim was a poor orphan boy living, being looked after by the gang and you left him homeless. Um, and uh, Mr. Aston, you solved a case in where the butler uh, did it, and Newgate was the butler's brother. So they all had this uh, reason to do. And Jimmy Hard Cheese, he hates detectives. I mean, they're not like detectives aren't like police. Police have a job to do. They turn up, they solve crimes. You know, you've got to have police and criminals. It's it's the way of the world. But you detectives, you are just scum of the earth. You you ruin people's lives. So this is sort of like his dying vengeance. He sort of gathered all these people with grudges to try and murder these detectives and settle the business once and for all. So uh, that's how the adventure plays out. Um, and of course what happens in the end is that you punch out the uh, servants, you sort of um, um, solve the case, and the police turn up eventually, and you just hand them over. You don't need things like evidence and things like that, because you're famous detectives. Everyone believes you. You know, who, you know, you know who, who's going to doubt the word of someone, as a, someone like Miss Maple, just because there's no evidence? So, uh, there we are. That is Mince Pies and Murder. Cool. Thanks, Chris, for uh, for running the game for us. Um, now, if you're interested in 66, uh, the RPG that we use to play this module or the module, where could we find this, Chris? Um, you can find it on our website, uh, 66rpg.com. Um, at the moment, we're just about to do the fulfillment for our Kickstarter, which is this part of the Kickstarter, and we're offering a special bundle prize. So if you missed out on the Kickstarter, you can basically get what you could get as a Kickstarter at sort of Kickstarter-ish prices. Um, this is only available for a couple of weeks, and just look for the special offers um, tab on the website. Very cool. All right, well, any uh, we're going to do a TLDR where we... Going to do a little bit of highlights, and there were a couple of questions that Chris normally asks of people who play the 66 RPG. So we'll be doing that in a separate, really small. We call it five minutes, but we're you know Brendan's part of this, so it's going to be more like seven minutes, and then Rich is part of it, so it's going to be like eight and a half minutes kind of thing. That we'll do right after this. Uh, now, if you want to see more demo games from us, uh, you need to. Click on the subscribe button. Wait, okay, Mark can tell us. Which way do we do we need Mark's to subscribe? I think, I think it's over here. Yep. It's right uh -huh. there. That's it where it goes. It's up there. <laughs> okay, there it, is. it will Thanks. be. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Brendan. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Jen. Um, and thank you very much, Chris, for running the game for us. Thank you, everyone, for playing. Fantastic. All right, well, we'll go ahead and stop here.